brought the Mavic along to test out some ND filters. Because uh, we just got them in the mail. We'll see how it goes. Now you really might be asking yourself what ND filters are for. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. So, the Mavic's camera is weird in that it is easy to overexpose. I don't know why it was engineered that way. It's basically a cell phone camera on steroids, meaning that it uh, is really awesome in the daytime with super light, but then it sucks when it starts getting dark out. Overcast conditions, you have to really play with the settings. Let's discuss these settings for a moment. Here we have a clip of the Mavic in its camera with no ND filters applied. If you notice that it raises the screen, it almost appears to have a stutter effect as the Mavic is turning. As we adjust the shutter speed, it lowers or raises the amount of over or under exposure. As you can tell by the histogram in the bottom left hand corner, you can see its adjustments. Peaking at the far right indicates overexposure. If you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen you can see it's almost pure white. That's indicative of being overexposed and in conditions like these where you have a haze it is easily evident. Here we put on the ND8 filter, which reduces the amount of shutter speed needed to lower the exposure and fill the histogram from right to left. If you notice, we introduce ISO uh, about 200 into some of the settings, trying to find that sweet spot of good quality picture and dang away from overexposure. If you notice here in the footage as the Mavic turns, it's a little smoother than when it was without the ND filter. I find the histogram helpful. It assists me in telling whether or not a particular shot is over or underexposed. Sometimes with these screens on the devices we use, it can be hard to tell just by looking at it. So using the histogram definitely helps me out in that aspect. Also, exposure is a matter of preference. It all depends on what kind of mood you're trying to create and get out of your shot and it all boils down to preference. Whether or not you want it slightly underexposed to give it a dramatic feel or if you're trying to get it overexposed to get as much detail in the shot as possible and maybe correct it in post. And now we'll switch over to the ND16 filter, which I think will be the most used out of all the filters in the pack. As you can see through the testing, I go through a couple of shutter speeds, uh, mainly a 150th and 160th shutter speed, just to try to find the best settings in the histogram. The reason why we want it, the shutter speed around 160th is we're shooting in 30 frames per second, like we, say, uh, like we stated earlier. And this will give the footage a nice smooth cinematic feel as we're turning, it reduces the rolling shutter effect from the camera. And again, this is all left up to preference and how you want your shot to look. As far as using the ISO, you can increase and decrease exposures to get the look and feel that you're wanting to create. Switching over to the ND32 filter gives us a prime example of how we could boost highlights and boost shadows in post. We're sitting at a shutter speed of 1 60th with the ISO of 200 here and as you can see the picture quality is pretty good. We're still not at the limits on the right side of the histograms. It leaves us some room for improvements to increase exposure. So that's why we drop it down to a shutter speed of 1 30th and leave the ISO at 200 to fill up the histogram. As we talked earlier this isn't the prime shutter speed and frame rate combination. We would like to keep the combination at 30 frames per second and 1 60th. Or if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want to do 24 at 1 50th. ND filters add a f-stop reduction level. Uh, the ND8 filter that we tested adds three stops. The ND16 adds four stops and the 32 adds five stops. 
of f-stop reduction. Basically this is dropping down the amount of light that is input into the camera sensor and it develops and equates to a better picture and better picture quality with the sensor being able to intake more data and provide the look and feel that you're wanting to create. If you take off and your ND filter is too dark, you can always adjust the ISO to no more than probably 400. If you go higher than that, you run the risk of grainy image quality. Nobody wants that. So let's get our controller turned on. Get our app opened up. So the whole point behind ND filters is to basically bring your frame rate and your shutter speed down to a manageable level. So the Mavic shoots in 24 frames per second as well as 30 frames per second and the eye naturally sees at 30 frames per second. So it just makes sense for us to shoot at 30 frames, at least it makes sense for me to shoot at 30 frames per second. It's easy to manage. You're shooting at 30 frames per second and you want your shutter speed to be at 60 or 1 60th to counteract the frames per second. If you go higher or lower, you run the risk of having a noticeable stutter in your film or a chopping effect or an unwanted blurring effect as you're turning. As you're turning, it'll kind of skip along. So you definitely want 30 frames per second at a shutter speed of 1 60th or if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you could probably still get away with 1 60th. I shoot 30 frames per second at 1 60th, so I want to keep that perfect, um, at least a, as prime a shoot as possible. So that's where ND filters come in. Depending on your light levels, the Mavic camera will typically be overexposed, and the ND filters will bring that overexposure down to where we can get our frame rates and shutter speeds uh, set up. As I mentioned earlier, you can set up your ISO if it's too dark. I usually like to shoot at 100 ISO. It seems to be the, the perfect amount for the Mavic camera as far as clarity is concerned for video quality. You can go up to 400, but anytime you step up in ISO, you introduce additional grain into your photo or video. That may be an undesirable effect that you're looking for. So I like to keep it uh, 30 frames per second, a shutter speed 1 60th, and ISO of 100. But I will bump it up if need be. If I don't have the time to land, and swap out ND filters, I will bump up the ISO more likely and try to fix it in post. So that's kind of what I do and what I look for. For the Mavic, I've found that the ND filters that I use the most are ND8, 16, and 32. If the lighting is prime, uh, I will use a UV filter without an ND. So with the UV filter is ultraviolet. It basically helps makes colors pop. Usually when you're flying drones and you're in the air, you, the footage ends up looking flat. And what the ND and UV filters do is they provide contrast and depth to your footage instead of looking flat. So if you're looking for that, that may be a benefit to you. So rarely I'll use a UV filter because I'm rarely flying in lighting situations that call for it. I will either use a uh, ND8 or 16, which are the typical ones. And if the lighting conditions or if I'm flying over water, it may call for 32. Typically I use that at noon. If the reflection is harsh off the water, I'll throw on the 32 and adjust ISO accordingly. And uh, yeah, that's kind of some of the, the tips for indie filters that uh, I use. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, leave comments if you have any questions. Give a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more content.